tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. When it comes to turning a page, you need to consider basically two things. One is called the pivot. Let's create, uh, just for testing, a polygon plane. When you rotate that, it rotates around this axis here. And when you turn a page, you want it to rotate around this axis or that axis for example and that's why you use the pivot and that's the first thing you need to think about press insert and then you get this icon and when you uh, move the locators now the object won't move but its center of whatever moves if you move it over here press insert again you're back to the rotation and now you rotate it around this axis that's the first thing you need to consider. The second thing is also interesting and crucial for turning a page and that is uh, the possibility to animate the whole object that turning process. You can also animate the components. I advise you for such a thing like a page turn to use NURBS modeling. Let's go to one of the orthogonal windows, for example the front window. Go to Curves and Surfaces here. If you don't find them here, go to uh, Modeling and actually you don't need to go there. Create and here you can create curves. Anyway, I, I prefer to use this tool here. and Let's make a very simple curve. Let's press the key X in order to place the first point in the center of our grid, right here. So it sits here. Then, with a key X again, we place the second point here and the third point here. So that's going to be, press, press enter, so that's going to be our uh, curve for the surface, for, and the surface will be the page. Uh, interestingly, the pivot sits exactly where we wanted it. So if you start uh, creating the the curve from from this side for example the pivot would sit here but you can always change it later as I just demonstrated you let's make that page turn it's actually actually not a page yet it's a curve but we can live with that curve it's again the Z axis so we go to the beginning of the animation and rotate Z and we enter the key zero if it's not there already anyway and set a key and now we go to the end, which could be 150, for example. And here our page, or a little bit earlier, 130. Here our page can be turned 180 degrees. Doesn't look uh, a lot different, but it certainly is. And we set another keyframe here. And uh, the nice thing in this case is also that uh, the animation starts smooth, sm uh, smoothly and it smooths out when it stops. Uh, it's not a linear. Uh, animation curve really which you can see right here animation editors graph editor so you see this slope here you can uh, make this uh, change this to the shape of the curve but in our case it's ideal really in many cases it's not ideal it slowly starts then it walks up and then it slows down like this is almost perfect now what we'll do next is uh, we'll go to the right mouse click control vertex and since we constructed such a simple curve we can easily manipulate the control vertices now we don't have hundreds we have only four of them or five and uh, how do we do this well let's start with this shape of the book for example or if we press the key B we get the soft selection and we can choose this if your soft selection is moving the whole object double click here and go to soft selection and um, change the fall of radius the smaller it gets the uh, more locally influence gets if this is raised to say 10 the whole object would move and uh, this is not uh, what we want anyway this um, 
is a nice starting point and we um, we start with this CV position here and set a keyframe by pressing S. I'm at key 5 currently. Now the animation goes like this and uh, of course that local placement is the same so we need to at the end of more or less the animation move this thing up and set another keyframe for uh, using S. So the page turns nicely now and now we can move on to building a surface. Okay, um, we press F8 in order to get back to the object mode and now we duplicate that curve. I will redo this uh, just in a second. I uh, uh, just want to show you something. We duplicate it, Control D, move it over here, select both of them with the Shift key and then we create a loft. It sits here or under surfaces loft. So that's a surface now spanning between the two identical curves. But we run into a problem and the problem is that the second curve, the duplicate, does not animate. It just sits there. So let's undo this. And we undo the duplication so we have only one curve in the scene now. And now we need to go to Edit, Duplicate Special because we have a speciality now in mind. And this op opens the option box and in the option box you don't just want to copy the thing but you want to in duplicate the input graph which means the animation. That's what's been fed into our curve. We want to duplicate that as well and we apply it and then we reset the settings so next time we'll, um, we'll see the default settings and we close that window. We have two curves now we move it to this side, span the surface like before and now our page turns just nicely. From now on you can modify the curve animation just as you want. For example, if you don't want this curve to start with the rotation at the very beginning but slightly later, which is might be quite natural really, you move this keyframe here, you've selected the curve, not the component, it has the keyframe here at zero. You can um, now with the middle mouse button drag it over here say to frame 25 and then you set another keyframe here. What it basically does or what you just did was move that keyframe over here. Uh, actually you can delete that one now with the right, right mouse button delete. So what the animation does now is the rear curve starts turning a little bit later which is a quite a natural process really. And what you also can do and let's uh, do it with the first curve now you press F8 or right mouse button and uh, the CVs and um, for example you can move over here and then select those two, set a keyframe for them and now you want to lag them to lag a little bit behind like this. This is a bit drastic now but uh, it's possible. Set another keyframe right here so that's a pretty fast manipulation here now it goes down like this. It depends a little bit on the sound you have and um, you see that the deformation keeps on until the very end. How do you get rid of that? Um, you need to go to this keyframe and you move that one with a middle mouse button over here for example and set another keyframe by pressing S. That means right here this movement up or down will be finished. Now it's finished and you have a solid placement of that surface. Okay, um, don't manipulate the the surface. You have all the control in the curves. 
which is a really nice thing with NURBS modeling. And of course, when you're finished with it, you can always turn it into a polygon. Right mouse click, actually ob object mode, so the lofted surface, the NURB surface is selected now. And then you go to modify, and under modify you have convert, and you can convert the NURBS to the polygons. Use the option box. In this case, uh, you would absolutely use quads here. And the default settings, use triangles. Because this is a quad thing, you can see it quite clearly right here. So you would typically convert it to quads now. Okay, um, last thing, just uh, to remind you that this is possible too. Uh, I assign a material which I have in my scene already. It's called AI two-sided shader. I assigned it to this object and you cannot see it properly um, here in the Maya render viewport, but you can see it in the Arnold viewport. Let's create a light for that, a sky dome light, and um, go to render and Arnold. And you might have to start it right here, the rendering process. And then you see the mapped picture. It's from Wikipedia actually and um, the Brecon reporter I think is the Welsh uh, newspaper and when you go to the very beginning you see Überland und Meer. This is a Jewish uh, magazine or a newspaper from I think the 19th century. Uh, I just uh, used that uh, uh, to feed in my AI a double-sided shader. Uh, more about double-sided shaders in another tutorial. And finally, I want to show you the animation which you saw at the very beginning and want to point you to something nice. Um, this is F-check here. Here I have the animation. Here you see basically what I just showed you. And you also see um, a, a little problem. And you see a motion blur. I just want to point you to the motion blur. Um, you see here it's getting out of focus and uh, blurred because it's a it's a st stronger animation here and movement here in uh, uh, relating to the camera than for example here. So here it's less blurred. Here it's not blurred at all here because this part doesn't move anyway. This is further away from the camera so the motion blur is not that drastic. But here uh, it is and then it settles and it gets um, uh, all right again. The problem you have here is the what is called the tessellation. I made a, a tutorial about this because our construction curves are so simple you have these kind of corners and edges here. You don't want them actually uh, and it's very easy to get rid of them. You need to check out the tessellation in the documentation of Maya or just check out my tutorial about tessellation. Uh, you don't need to reconstruct that curve. You can just work with the resolution of that surface. Well, bye-bye.